Now, all throughout his campaign, uh, President Trump has railed against the elite. Uh, oh, that, the, that's the problem. You got the elites and they don't know what they're doing and they've got control of everything. Well, we're going to take it back. We're going to take it back for the people, right? Uh, and once again, at a recent uh, rally, he again went after the elites. Although, he also said something very interesting. Uh, now, he said, I hate it. I meet these people. They call it the elite. Well, okay. Well, again, that matches with his populist rhetoric. He's not a populist at all, but he does use uh, some sort of populist rhetoric, really against the elites and, of course, um, all that stuff. But here's where it gets a little strange. He said, we got more money. We got more brains. We got better houses and apartments. We got nicer boats. We're smarter than they are. And they say they're the elite. Well, that's very strange for a president who claims to represent the, the little guy, the guy who's been crushed, um, the normal manufacturer living in Ohio and you know other places in the Rust Belt. We've got better things than they are, and they call themselves the elite. Well, then he says, well, obviously, you're the elite. We're the elite. In fact, they're so elite now that he says, Let's call ourselves from now on the super elite. But isn't the whole problem with the elite the fact that they are the elite? Wasn't that the whole purpose of calling them out? Say, look at those elitists. Well, they got everything and you've got nothing. And it's all because of them. But, oh, no, that would be actually true. <laughs> what we have uh, in the system today. Uh, so, well, you can't say that. So now, here we go. Uh, elites. He said, we got more money, more brains, better houses, and nicer boats. Now, look, he's not talking about you. Okay, he's not talking about somebody working in the steel mill or somebody in the nail factory, who, by the way, is going to be losing their job or the guy working at Harley Davidson. No, no, he's talking about himself. I'm better than the elites. <laughs> I'm more elite than the elites. Look at me. I'm so much better now. I'm president of the United States. In fact, earlier this week, he said pretty much that. You ever notice how they, they always call the other side the elite? The elite. Why are they elite? I have much better apartment than they do. I'm smarter than they are. No, you're not. I'm richer than they are. I became president and they didn't. And I'm representing the greatest, smartest, most loyal, most loyal best people on earth. The deplorables. Well, he at least got that, that right. Uh, look, he says he hates the elite, but in reality, he is an elite. And actually, he's desperate to become part of that group. I mean, look, this goes back during the election, after the election, and throughout his entire life, Trump <clears throat> has always wanted to be one of them, the same people that he decries, right? In fact, uh, the Atlantic's McKay Coppins wrote in an article last year about him he says the president's behavior begins to make more sense once you understand the stories he's long told himself about his roots his rise and especially his haters that he's easily provoked and perpetually aggrieved is not a revelation of course but trump harbors a very specific kind of class anxiety that's rooted in the topography of his native new york city it's funny to think that he's got some sort of class anxiety this this guy this idiot this man child who had a silver spoon born up his ass, or, well, who was born with a silver spoon up his ass, I should say. Boy, did I butcher that. Uh, he's talking about, oh, those elites up there, they look down on us. Well, you look down on everybody else. You're, you're, not, a, you're not a member of the working class. You never worked a day in your goddamn life. Hilarious. Uh, but anyway... Coppin's article continues, he said, though he was born into a wealthy family, protecting of the various perks and privileges afforded to millionaires' offspring, never forget that, Trump grew up in Queens, a pleasant but unfashionable borough whose residents were sometimes dismissed by snooty Manhattanites as bridge and tunnel people. Well, fuck you, uh, snooty Manhattanites. <laughs> that would piss me off. Uh, now, he said, from a young age, 
He was acutely aware of the cultural and physical chasm that separated himself from the city's aristocracy. In several interviews and speeches over the years, he has recalled gazing anxiously across the East River towards Manhattan, desperate to make a name for himself among the New York elite. Now, that's who President Trump is. All he cares about is being accepted by them. He wants to be one of the elites, and now, of course, he wants to be better than the elites. He wants to be the super elites. Wonderful. Look, and you know how he gets to be super elite? By screwing you over. Look, and he's already done that. So, for example, 83% of the tax cuts went to the super rich, right? Those are tax cuts that Trump loves. While at the same time, soybean farmers in middle America are being crushed by the trade war. Harley Davidson is leaving, cutting hundreds of jobs, and they're going to Thailand. Mid-continent nail uh, is planning to lay off all 500 employees by Labor Day. So they're going out of business. There goes a bunch of jobs. He doesn't know what he's doing. Well, okay, he doesn't know what he's doing, and he doesn't care. He's not intellectually curious. So all he wants to do is help out, ironically, the elite which he wants to be. Now, the global financial elite, by the way, he ran ads against the global financial elite. Guess who's doing really, really great under President Trump? The global financial elite. Well, how are you doing? Has your pay gone up? Has your pay increased? Or, No, no, you're losing your job and your benefits are being cut. He's coming after pensions. And still, and this is amazing. This is, the, this is the worst part. People who are being affected by this are still backing the president. In fact, there was an article here uh, about Harley-Davidson workers. Now, the workers gathered outside the factory gate could end up as collateral damage. However, most are sticking by their man regardless. Wearing earphones draped around their necks and safety blinders on their glasses, <laughs> most happily volunteered that they voted for Trump and would do so again, tariffs or no tariffs. One of them uh, said, quote, he wouldn't do it unless it needed to get done. He's a very smart businessman. So, wait, he needs to do tariffs that are going to destroy your job. That has literally destroyed your job because he's so smart. And he's got to do it. He's a very smart businessman. No, he has nothing. He, he has no idea what he's doing. He bankrupted six casinos. You, you don't go bankrupt running cas a, a casino unless you're an idiot. Because he is an idiot. Now, here's another one. I think he's playing poker. I'll hit you with this. He'll hit us with that. I think this will bring him to the table. Unless he's completely crazy. Well, you know what? To be honest, there might be a little bit of hope for this guy. If a year from now he's working at McDonald's for minimum wage, and I hope he doesn't, uh, I hope everything works out. But if he does, I hope there's a follow-up. I wonder if he'll say, hey, it turns out he was crazy. Yeah, who knew? Right. Of course. Now, as whether they blame the president or the EU for causing Harley's offshoring decision, most say that they blame only the EU. No, it's the Europeans' fault. Well, I mean, they should have just shut up and let us hit them with tariffs. <laughs> That's not how this works. You put tariffs on somebody... They're going to put tariffs on you back. That's what happens. That's what starts a trade war. Th there wasn't any negotiation. They didn't sit down and try to hammer out an agreement and fail and then, okay, fine, tariffs. That's what a normal president would do. This guy's like, I don't know, I'm just going to slap tariffs on everybody. I'm going to slap tariffs on Canada. Why? Why? Now, one of them said, quote, the president was just trying to save the aluminum and steel industry. Well, great. Wonderful. <laughs> Look, man, lobbying tariffs against people without any negotiation is really dumb. Trade wars are really dumb. They're not good. They're not easy to win. You know who suffers the most? You guys. Because the elites in which he is a part of will never suffer. <laughs> but there are people who, no matter what, they've drunk the Kool-Aid, uh, and they will never put the blame on Trump, no matter if he deserves it 
These are the people that we're never going to reach. There are some, however, that do realize that, hey, wait a minute, nothing has changed. My paychecks have not gotten bigger. That's why the tax cuts are at a record 30%. They notice that, hey, you know what? Nothing has happened. I haven't seen any sort of gain in my paycheck all that much. Uh, my life's not getting better. Some of us are losing our jobs. Turns out uh, this whole Trump thing, kind of a lie, kind of some snake oil. Hmm. And they'll notice that while they're doing terrible, Trump's calling himself the super elite. Boy, that must feel good for them, huh? Hopefully there are people who we can bring back to reality, the people who notice that what they were sold was nothing but snake oil. Hopefully, we'll have to see. Hey everybody, thanks for watching this video. If you want to see more like this, please hit the subscribe button below. And if you want to support truly independent progressive media, please consider becoming a patron at patreon.com slash TYTNation.